Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Outdoor Digital Menu Boards. Or, for those of us that are from New York, you want to take this outside. Here we go. We got a, we've got exactly 30 minutes. Uh, we'll start on time, we'll end on time, and uh, we've got a lot of great information for you this morning. We're excited about it. We hope you are too. Great turnout today. Um, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. You can type them into GoToMeeting as we go along, and, uh, and, and off we go. So first I'm going to introduce our presenters, the benefits of outdoor, talk about the ROI, how to build a great outdoor menu strategy, including how to design your content, and planning that strategy for seamless execution across your restaurant footprint. What do outdoor solutions look like? And as I mentioned, we'll have plenty of time for a Q&A. We'll recap what we learned, and, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So uh, I'm Chuck Gaiman. I'm the VP of Product Management here at Wand Corporation. I've been in tech for a long, long time, and my favorite movie is Rocky, as it says. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Jason Bates. I'm a product analyst here at Wand. I've been in the tech industry for a little over a decade now, and my favorite movie is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And then we've got Dave Carroll, who's our president. He's not presenting, but we thought this picture was too good to pass up, so we had to include it. So let's get into the meat of today's presentation. Outdoor digital menu boards, the benefits. So there, there are two important things that you need to know about outdoor, outdoor menu boards. The first is that they improve operational efficiency. The second is that they create, they increase the revenue. So let's talk about operational efficiency first. So how many times have we seen a you know, three people rush out to the outdoor menu board to change over the day part from breakfast to lunch at 10.30. Uh, that is not an efficient way to run an operation. And this is happening at thousands and thousands of restaurants across the country. The other thing that happens is that it's incredibly cumbersome to update the products that are displayed on those menu boards and or the pricing. That's an effort that in most static operations and in many boards that are printed requires the printing process, which in 2015 is something that's very expensive and, and leads to uh, a lack of change, hence the name static menu board. No change happens. And with outdoor digital menu boards, your product mix and your pricing can be changed daily. They can be changed from one day part to the next. There's a lot of benefits to doing that. We'll talk more about that. And with digital menu boards, you can react quickly to current events in your restaurant. So if there's an uh, important sports game going on nearby, if the weather is changing, if you know, you, you're just slammed with uh, a drive through line that's around the block, for one reason or another, maybe an unforeseen reason, you can change the menu board on the fly and, and profit from getting people through the line more quickly. And then increasingly important in today's society, the digital menu boards let you much more easily provide multilingual support so you can attract different customer demographics. And outdoor digital menu boards increase revenue, and they do that by simplifying the menu content to improve speed of service and the customer experience. And we'll talk about this quite a bit when we get into the, the content and when we show you examples of menu boards in the field. The other really important thing that the outdoor digital menu boards do is they focus customer attention on items you want to sell. And they do this through vibrant graphics, and through really simple animations that catch people's eyes on the, on the digital menu boards. And they advance your ability to market to your customer at the point of purchase. You can feature the items that you want people to buy in the day part that you're selling them. So that's the important thing, is that um, you're going to be 
focus on the marketing of the products that you want to sell. And as a result, you're going to get people through the line more quickly, and they're going to be happier, and you're going to sell the items to them that you want them to buy. So what do outdoor solutions look like? I'm going to turn it over to Jason, and he's going to talk about the solutions that, are, that have entered into the marketplace recently. Great. Well, thanks, Chuck. And uh, once again, good morning, everybody. You know, I, I wanted to take a look at what outdoor digital menu solutions look like for a couple of reasons this morning. First is they're ever-evolving right now. This is an industry that is rapidly improving, rapidly releasing new technology. And also because there are a lot of different fundamental uses for how outdoor digital menu displays work. So let's just take a, a look at a couple of them here. You know, one of the main things that we see is a simple pre-sale display. This is going to be a display that's sitting further out in the queue from the point of order. It's going to be something that's showing a couple of promos, kind of whetting the customer's appetite, pointing them towards key promotional items, things that drive higher margins or quicker speed of service uh, for your particular brand, and really start to engage that customer digitally before they get up to make the order. The next thing that we see, kind of a little bit more of a standardized implementation of outdoor digital menu boards, but a simple three-by menu board, something that shows all of the uh, main product mix, shows those key products that you want to present to the customer in the line as they're pulling up to the point of order. We also see a lot of promotional displays and queuing instruction displays, especially if you operate a multi-lane drive-through where you may need the customers to pull to different windows depending on where they've made their order from. This is a great way to not only engage your customer and again show them a few more pr promotions, but also make sure that they're moving quickly and efficiently and correctly through the line so they're not slowing down your speed of service because they don't understand how the ordering process works. And finally, one of the things that we really like here and something that, uh, that we've made sure our technology covers is the ability to integrate order confirmation directly into those digital menu boards, getting rid of those pedestals, getting rid of the, uh, the two-line displays, making sure that the customer sees right there at the point of engagement everything that they're ordering, making sure that that order accuracy is on par, and again, not slowing down the speed of service, not frustrating the customers, moving them through the lines quickly and efficiently. And just to kind of give you an idea of kind of some of the differences between a static menu board, a kind of particularly not well done menu board, and a digital outdoor digital menu board, I think you can look at this picture and probably decide pretty quickly which of these two restaurants you'd rather order from. I know personally, for me, with the menu on the left, I would probably sit there for two or three minutes just trying to read all of those options and wrap my head around how I place an order. Whereas the menu board on the right is very quick, very concise, points me right towards those items that I as a customer am going to want to order, and gives me a fairly limited set of options to ensure that I order quickly and move on through the line to keep the queue moving. I'm going to pass things back over here to Chuck. He's going to take a moment and kind of talk a little bit about the uh, ROI that comes along with outdoor digital menu boards and some of the benefits. So yeah, so the question is, is it time to make the leap? And we think it, it really is. With the, the cost of the outdoor equipment coming down in price and the growing adoption of indoor digital menu boards, if you're a quick serve restaurant and some 60 to 75 percent of your revenue comes from the drive-through lane, then there is absolutely an ROI. And you couple that with the uptick in sales that you're most likely to achieve and the operational efficiencies, getting people through that line more quickly, it's I wouldn't call it a no-brainer, but there, there are very much benefits that you're going to achieve. A typical drive-through will achieve an ROI. They'll recoup their initial investment in outdoor digital menus in 18 to 24 months using hardware that is built to last much longer. So let's take a look at the strategy to build content for outdoor. This is probably the most important part. The enclosure, the screens, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of the hardware and software a little bit later. But for now, let's focus on the content. Because that's the thing that's going to set your restaurant apart in the drive through and that's the thing that's going to achieve the revenue goals that you want. Right. And spot on, Chuck. I mean, we're 
where digital menu strategy is important in indoors, that's magnified in outdoor digital menu boards. Again, because of some of the things we've mentioned with keeping that speed of service up, uh, keeping order accuracy up, and making sure that customers understand the ordering process well. Uh, here we have Wand Burger. We are a compliant FDA burger, so we'll get into a little bit of a couple of subjects here, but we're going to try and keep this on outdoor menu boards as much as we can. First and foremost, make sure that those menus are easy to read. You can see in our example here, we have three main combo lines. We actually encompass five combos in those three lines, and that's specifically done to ensure that the customer can, can take in that information quickly, understand what they're looking at, and make a decision based on the information presented to them. We do recommend that you get ahead of the curve with the FDA uh, uh, caloric value requirements that are coming down the pike here. Integrate those early, make sure that you're ready to go with those, and also start that conversation with your customers early. Make sure that they understand where your brand stands on that. We talked about that in our, our previous webinar, uh, and, and we'll touch on that a little bit later on. Make sure you're delivering your brand message. Just like with indoor digital menu boards, with outdoor digital menu boards, you want to engage your customer in your brand story, in your brand's messaging. Make sure that they're being just as engaged as if they went inside into the restaurant to place their order. Make sure you leave some room on the menu boards for promos and order confirmations. And one important note on promos, one of the big mistakes that we see with folks who are trying to implement outdoor digital menu boards is the tendency to kind of overdo it with promos, to have a reel of five, six, seven different promos going on while a customer is trying to order. And that does two things to the customer's ordering process. First of all, it distracts them from placing that order. They see that next eye-catching promo pop up. And secondly, it slows down the ordering process simply because they're trying to take in new information. They're trying now to make new decisions. And it's distracted them from placing that order. And again, uh, with most content management systems, Make sure you're taking advantage of zones, overlays, and dynamic information. Chuck touched on this earlier, mentioned that you need to have the ability to adapt to environmental conditions and make sure that your signage is relevant to what your customers are seeing. Now let's take a second here and just talk about project management. As you're implementing digital menu boards, obviously there's going to be a lot of moving pieces in a project like this. This is something that you want to have planned very intricately and make sure that you as an organization have a plan to be successful and know how to measure that success accurately. So step number one is what we like to call internally choosing a champion. Choosing somebody who is connected enough to the organization and understands your brand well enough to own the process from start to stop. This is somebody who can work with operations teams, marketing teams, IT teams, local restaurant operators and franchisees to make sure that everything is prepared and ready to go. Secondly, you want to identify some of the stakeholders that I just mentioned. A lot of people tend to think that digital menu boards are a marketing operation, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Digital menu boards involve operations teams to make sure that the menu content is up to date and appropriate for the market. It involves IT teams making sure that connectivity and technology is up to par. And it can also involve a lot of other stakeholders depending on your brand structure. The next step is what we like to call plan to measure. And what plan to measure means is that before you even start the project, you understand what your key performance metrics are to make sure that you're measuring appropriately for the success of a digital menu board implementation, outdoor digital menu board implementation. Of course, there's a lot of partners co to coordinate with outdoor digital menu boards. You have, again, operations teams, IT teams, construction teams, vendors, partners, all sorts of folks that need to be coordinated throughout the entire process. Next step is to then begin to initiate the rollout. Notice that we've done a lot of pre-preparation before we initiate any rollouts whatsoever. And once again, that's to make sure that we understand the full picture of what that rollout looks like. And finally, manage through to completion. Every installation, every single uh, checkbox needs to be checked as you manage through this process to make sure that nothing gets left untouched that could come back and cause you problems later on down the road. Now let's take a second here and just look at what makes a good outdoor digital menu solution? Now that we're talking about installing them, let's talk about some of the key points that we look for in solutions and we recommend that everybody is cognizant of as you're evaluating potential solutions. 
One of the first things, I, by far one of the most important, is a standardized installation model. Something that you can repeat over and over and over and iterate on instead of having to do a one-off installation every single time you want to out install outdoor digital menu boards. With the advancements in the technology and the hardware in outdoor digital menu boards, a turnkey solution is an absolute must these days. Something that you can fire up with electricity and have it playing content right out of the gate. Climate controls are very important, and again, we'll touch on those in just a second here. Brightness is again very important. Brightness is the difference between your customer being able to see the order clear, to see the menu board clearly and order off of it quickly, and having to squint and glare, squint into glare from the sun, or not being able to read things clearly. Uh, this is a very important point. Chuck kind of touched on durability earlier. That as we're looking at the ROI, we want hardware that's going to last for a good period of time, something that's going to support your operation for many years to come. Manufacturer warranties are always important even not just in, in the uh, off chance that there is a hardware failure, but also just to have that support, have a partner to lean on should something come up where you need a little bit of assistance. And one of the great trends that we're seeing emerging in the industry today is modular designs, where should you need that warranty, should something go wrong, only components of that outdoor digital menu solution need to be replaced, not the entire solution itself. So now when we look at a couple of particular solutions, ones that we at Wand here utilize and recommend, uh, the first is the Wand View Station. This does provide a standardized installation model. They have pre-configured cabinets that can be installed pretty quickly and easily. Again, it is a turnkey solution. They come pre-assembled from the manufacturer so that once they're dropped onto a concrete footing and powered up with electricity, they're essentially ready to go. The View Station has phenomenal climate control. Uh, it used to be way back when that there was a very specific region in the United States where you could operate these, uh, these outdoor digital displays. But now, even up here in the frozen tundra of Minnesota where it hits 10, 15, 20 below, this is absolutely going to continue to work in those conditions all the way down to Arizona where it can hit 110, 115 degrees very regularly. Their climate controls can compensate for that and ensure that the, uh, that the menu boards keep working in, optimal, in less than optimal conditions. They are extremely durable. Uh, this partner has had these solutions out in the field for 10 plus years and we still see them working to this day with very, very low maintenance rates. They offer a three-year standard warranty and it is a fully modular design. Now to come back to that brightness piece, um, brightness on a digital menu display is measured in what's called NITS. And NITS is essentially a fancy way of saying that if you lit, in this case, 2,000 candles and put them in a room together, that's how bright this digital display would be. It's very bright. It's very readable. You can put it in direct sunlight, and it will absolutely be readable and very easy to see for your customers. Now, looking at a second solution, a little bit different approach to outdoor digital menu displays, we have the Wand Extreme. Once again, very standardized installation model, and I will say this is maybe one of the easiest to install models out in the, in the market today. Uh, we, can, we see two individuals installing these displays in four to eight hours on a, on a regular basis. Again, a turnkey solution, once it's placed in the ground and powered up, it's ready to go. The climate controls are still exceptionally good, working anywhere from 15 below, like we see up here in Minnesota, all the way up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. They are extremely durable. Once again, this is a partner that's been doing this for a very long time and understands how to make these units last. They provide a two-year manufacturer's warranty, and this is an extremely modular design. Each one of the displays can be dismounted individually. The rack that holds the displays can be expanded or contracted to hold different numbers of displays. And when we touch on the brightness, this is one that I wanted to touch on very specifically because even though this device only provides 700 nit of brightness, this partner has developed a proprietary gel coating that actually increases the brightness of the display in direct sunlight and at the same time also prevents it from vandalism and malicious use and things like that so that any graffiti or things like that can easily be wiped off the display and go back to normal operation. So I'll pass things back to Chuck here. He's going to give us a quick review and recap of some of the things we just talked about. Fantastic information. Thank you so much, Jason. That was terrific. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, right as we get into the review here, let me just uh, remind you that you can ask questions in the GoToWebinar. I see some questions are starting to roll in. 
So go ahead and type them in, and we'll uh, we'll try to get to them. If we don't answer them live this morning, we will absolutely uh, email you an answer. So so thanks a lot. So let's talk about what we've just learned. So digital menus in the drive-through. We talked about the operational efficiencies you can gain. We talked about increases in revenue and ROI. We talked about improved brand messaging, and we talked about improving the customer experience. And they just look great. That bright look that you get with the digital, whether it's the 700 nit or the 2000 nit, 700 candles in a room sounds pretty bright to me, actually, Jason. But um, you know, the the other interesting thing about the the uh, the boards is that they, they lower the light automatically when the sun goes down, so it's not blinding to people in the dark as they as they drive up to the drive-through. So so they're very sophisticated. The costs have come way down over the last few years, and it's just a terrific uh, improvement to your operational efficiency, and and you'll see revenue gains from it. And we've got some some customers that are very very happy with the results that they've achieved. So. Um, I won't say everything twice, but because I, I think we already have, but uh, let's go ahead and um, and get to some questions here. So, um, why aren't iPhone chargers called Apple Juice? Well, they certainly should be. Should I be. feel like that's a huge marketing miss. Yeah, they're, they're definitely missing the boat on that one. So let's see, what do we have here for questions? I see our first question. Uh, it's from. Uh, Oh, I can't tell where where this person's from, but it says, "What ROI are you seeing post installation, and how do you measure it?" Well, it's pretty easy to measure it. You know, at once once the outdoor has been in a quarter, um, you can compare year over year sales. We've had people whose whose tickets have gone up nine to twelve percent by adding digital. And uh, you know, it really the the speed of service through the drive-through is another thing most POS systems can can measure. That should improve also. So there, there's a number of metrics that we can show you that you know vary from one restaurant to the next, and you know your your results will will be tailored to what kind of operation you're running and all the other variables, but. Um, there's, there's definitely, there are many ways we can, we can measure the success of this, and, and helping you determine what the success criteria are before you make the investment is, is part of what we do um, when we, when we work with people in doing these outdoors. So, uh, let's look for another question here. Um, what kind of construction is required to install outdoor menu boards? That's that's one that you know we've had numerous conversations about over the years. Why don't you take that one, Jay? Yeah, sure. And again, you know, this is one that's going to vary a little bit case by case. But in general, there's a few key requirements that need to be in place before that outdoor solution can be installed. You are going to need to trench data, power, and uh, any other cabling outside from the from the inside of the restaurant out to where the digital menu solution is going to be installed. And generally, after what you have that trenching done, all that really needs to be done is pouring a concrete footer. Now, both of the providers that we mentioned previously actually provide you a template to, per, to pour that footer. So it's a very simple process. From there, it's going to depend on the solution you choose. With the Wand Extreme, that's two guys lifting components into place. It's a very quick, easy modular installation. With the uh, Wand View Station, it is slightly more involved. That one is going to require a, a crane because that cabinet comes pre-assembled. But again, once the crane lifts it into place, it's essentially ready to go. It's bolted together, it's locked in place, the electricity is fired up, and that, uh, and that solution is ready to go. So again, we'll vary a little bit, but both of the installation processes have been simplified significantly over the years. Awesome answer. I would just add also that um, that's the reason we added the the extreme unit um, is because some customers had drive-throughs in urban areas or in challenging uh, lots um, where a truck crane actually couldn't fit into the drive-through to do the installation of the larger unit. So the uh, the wand extreme can go in in places with you know where any pickup truck can go basically, um, or or even not have a pickup truck. You can carry it to the you can you can put it on a dolly and wheel it down the down the lane to get to where you're going to install it. So, so a lot of flexibility there. 
Um, the other thing, Jason mentioned the trenching, there, there are a number of different approaches to that, how to run the electricity out there, how to run data, video. Um, we can consult with you on different options there, but it's basically a conduit. It's not a big, big operation. Um, and another thing I would add is if you, you know, if you're using drive-through timers and things like that, or if you're thinking about, you know, repaving your, your drive-through lanes, that's a great time to, to put this in, you know, that, or, or even if you're doing landscape, new landscaping around the building, it's a great opportunity to, to spruce things up. So, um, so construction is an awesome topic that, that we're, we're ready to engage on. Let's look for another question here. Um, oh, here's a good one. Can it integrate with my POS? You want to take that one? Absolutely, and really good question. Um, obviously, we talked about the order confirmation a little bit earlier, but didn't go too deep into the specifics of that. The simple answer is yes, it absolutely can. Essentially, all that digital menu solution is going to look for is a data feed from the point of sale telling it what the order is that's being rung is at the moment. Uh, at least with WAN's technology, we automatically detect when that feed is coming out from the point of sale and automatically display it on the board. There's no need to push additional buttons to get the order confirmation to come up for the customer where somebody may forget or may push something incorrectly. It's all automated and as that order is rung on the point of sale, it's immediately shown to the customer in real time. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I, and I would also just add, if you've got uh, our digital menu boards in your restaurant, that, that same pricing that can come out of your POS system and into your menu boards goes to the outdoor too. It's, it's completely seamless. It's, it's the exact same interface, it's the exact same data, and, and our menu boards also allow you to change the pricing through our mobile interface. So you can just go ahead and, and change things standing in front of the outdoor menu board if you want to, if it's not raining, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Or sitting on a beach somewhere or sunny. Sitting on a beach, you know, controlling your restaurant remotely. Oh, boy, you know, that's, that's my idea of fun. All right, I think we've got time. We've got time for at least one more question here. Let's see what we've got. What's the lead time required to install outdoor menu boards? You know, and this is, again, a very good question. You guys are kind of on point today with the questions. Um, generally, lead time for an outdoor digital installation is going to be 45 to 60 days. Again, because of the construction requirements, because of some of the additional elements for the implementation, you want to leave yourself plenty of time on that. We see vendors being able to provide hardware in as little as two weeks. However, when, as you have to coordinate all those different teams, all the partners, the construction teams, operations, IT, et cetera, you want to give yourself uh, 60 days on the high end to make sure that you're completely ready to go when uh, the hardware shows up at the restaurant ready to be installed. Well, with that, I wanted to make sure that uh, we provided you with our direct contact information. Uh, Jason and Chuck at WandCorp, um, give us a, a, a ring, send us a note. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any additional questions you have. And um, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed the content. We certainly had a good time presenting it. We're very passionate about the topic, and we are absolutely looking forward to engaging with uh, all of you on your outdoor digital needs. Thanks so much and have a great day. By the way, the webinar recording will send you an email and it will be available as early as this afternoon, but we'll let you know when. Thank you so much and take care. Thanks everybody.